Welcome to Lecture Online, and now let's take a look at current density. Here we have a um, what we call a conductor, and notice that the current through the conductor uh, varies with radius. At the center, there's zero current, so it goes down to zero, and as you go out towards the edge of the conductor, the current increases according to the equation. Current density is equal to K times R cubed. So when R is zero, current density is zero. When R is its maximum, R, the radius of the cylinder, then you see you have the maximum current density. But what is current density? Well, current density, by definition, is current divided by unit area. So if the current density was uniform, you have the same amount of current everywhere through the conductor. But here you can see that it varies with radius. And so if you're trying to find the total current in this conductor, what we need to do is, mm, let's see here, find a small little di, a small little current region where the current is the same everywhere. And to do that, we probably want to draw a very small little ringlet, like so. A ringlet which is a distance r away from the center, which has a thickness dr. And if we make the thickness dr small enough, the current density doesn't change over that very small difference in the radius. And so what we can say is that the amount of uh, current I through that little ringlet inside the conductor is equal to the current density J. And I'm going to use a small j to indicate that the, it varies. So we use small j or capital J when it's a constant. So that's how we delineate between the two. So it'll be the current density times the area. So it's going to be a di, and we're going to call that a, D, a DA, and we're going to call this a DI. So a small amount of current goes through this portion of the cylinder of the conductor. The, the area will be the area, the surface area of this little ringlet, and J will be the current density according to the equation KR cubed. So when we plug in the numbers, we can then say, or at least not the numbers per se, we're not ready to do that yet, but when we plug in the, what J and DA are equal to, we get a small amount of current is equal to J, which is K, times r cubed times dA, and dA will be the circumference times the thickness would be 2 pi r times dr. That would be the surface area of this little ringlet there. And that would be, yes, the dA of our equation. So now to find the total current i, we're going to integrate all the di's, and the di's will be integrated from r equals 0 to r equal the radius of the cylinder. So from 0 to big R, which is equal to the integral from 0 to big R of kr cubed times 2 pi r times dr. Now notice that 2 pi and k are all constant. They can come outside the integral sign. So this is equal to 2 pi k times the integral from 0 to big R of r to the fourth. Oh, that's a terrible looking r. Let me try that again. r to the fourth divided by, oh, not divided by, times dr. Okay, all right. Now, that's an easy one to integrate. So this is equal to 2 pi k. I keep forgetting my pi here. 2 pi k times r to the fifth divided by the new exponent 5 evaluated from 0 to r. Notice when we plug in the lower limit, we get 0, so we can ignore that. When we plug in the upper limit, we get 2 fifths pi k times r to the fifth. And that would be the total amount of current flowing through the conductor with varying current density. And so that's how we deal with current density. So this video shows you what current density is. It's simply current per unit area. If it's a constant, it's simply the total current divided by the total area. But if the current density varies with, in this case, the radius, then to find the total current, we simply have to sum it all up using little ringlets the surface area of each ringlet, dA, is equal to 2 pi r, the circumference times the thickness, that's the dA, and the current density as a function of r is kr cubed, and then we integrate, and that's how we do that.